What's up guys, Tim Halston with Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, it's been a long time since I made a video with me talking in front of the camera, other than looking at someone's car or a feature of an engine or something. But here's the deal. I've been busy. I've been working on Andrea's 69 Fastback Mustang. Um, and this video that I'm gonna show you is something that you're not gonna see in other restoration videos, because no one wants to show you what they really have to go through when you have a roll bar in place and you want to put back a stock interior. It's a lot easier to put have the stock interior in place and then do the roll bar. But either way, when I got the Mustang, Eric had a roll bar put in it. I mean, it fits nice. It's, it's wait till you see this. But in order to get the package tray that is like a cover where if you had speakers in the back, they would sit in there and it covers the back of the well before you get to the trunk. The way a Mustang is set up, which there's not a lot of videos out there on the rear Mustang interior. There's some on the fold down seat, but the, they use the same component. That fold down seat is the same one they use um, for a stationary seat, just bolted in. You'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm making this video to show you, it's over 50 minutes long. I don't expect you to watch the whole thing, me crawling in and out underneath that roll bar at least eight or nine times, because I thought what would be an easy cut, cut, fit, fit across the roll bar, slide right in place, was nothing of the sort. And I'm the kind of person that when I put my head to it, my mind to it, I'm gonna finish it. I wanted it to look stock. I didn't wanna just cut it in half and then fit it in there and try to rivet it together. And I thought it'd be easier. But I talked to other people about this because I wasn't gonna post this video because it's pretty crazy how much time it takes to fit things in the right way and to make it look stock. One of the other reasons that I'm making this video is one of my next couple of videos that are coming up are going to be something that's going to be totally way off anything you've seen. And I don't want to give it away now, but everybody that's watching this video here will benefit from it. And anybody that doesn't even watch my videos will benefit from it. If I just watch what's involved with bending and contorting and twisting to try to get that damn package tray to fit in the factory location, the way a Mustang is set up with the side pillars and the fastback, the little brackets to mount everything. It's hard in a roll bar, add that in. So it's a tough workout, there's no doubt about it. A couple quick shout outs. John Martin, he hooked me up uh, with this intake. I wanna give a big shout out to him. Let's check it out. Now this is supposed to be from Terry Parker himself. John bought it from Terry, he said a year and a half ago. Terry poured it and there's some fingerprints on it he said and they're Terry Parker, so I don't know. We'll see, but this intake is sitting on the 354 Cleveland at 600 horsepower front Lycans motor. And that's what my kids and I are going to work on next. And we'll kind of fill you in on that, what we got planned for that. Oh, wow. Nice. Boy, these are heavy. There it is. Never had one before. Guess I better have it. You can see how the ports, too, they're set up for like a raised, it looks like intake that's a heavy intake that's a heavy damn intake right there i think it says like matilda foundry but either way it's pretty cool i never really cared for this type of opening that cloverleaf pattern so like i said i hope you enjoy some of this video not me crawling in and out but i'm telling you it's a lot of work just watch and this is the stuff they don't show you when they're restoring cars. I'm learning a lot on this build. It's going to be cool. I'm trying to fit the package tray or speaker tray, that metal plate right here, with the roll bar. So looking at it, I've marked it out. You might be able to see a mark there. And there's one on that side where I'm going to cut that out. That should allow it to slide down. So yeah, there's the feature there, and this flips down. But this isn't a fold down rear seat. They have the same component, I think, because the back seat bolts to this. So hopefully I can get it in there. Yeah, so check this out. This is why I get a sore back. I have to deal with this. That roll bar. It's always harder to 
work in something like this. Oh. So now this has got to come out. See how frustrating this is? <laughs> Thank you. 
to fit customize Here we go again. Let's see how this fits now that I split it so it should slide over the roll bar a lot easier. Plus it's still bent from when I pulled it out of there. Okay, those things just kind of lay there and try to get them in there. Which is pretty easy since it's already bent. Yeah, famous last words. Not in the best area, I guess.
bitch. About two seconds, I cut that damn thing out of there. Five minutes of this. All right, here we go again. Jesus. We go again.
much right there. Here we go again for like the fifth time. Hopefully this will be the final fit. It's on the other side hit. It's going to be about all I want to do with this today.
just need to do. Well, here we go for the fifth freaking time. What was that the last time? We'll, we'll find out. Falls way down now. I ain't bringing that thing out again. Bye. And then that thing fits nice.
Here we go again. I don't know what time this is. All that for this. There ain't no way that fits with a slice down the middle like I thought it would. It just can't do it. But above that right hand corner, that'll go up there with a screw. The same thing over there and then the front aspect here I can just push up and put my own screws in after I get this front part bolted in here. But you'll never see that once I'm all done. All right, so if you never put in a Mustang back seat, <laughs> neither have I. There's not a lot of videos on it. There's some people that show some detail, but not like this, at least from what I've looked at. But there's a mounting bracket right there, and there's one on this side. I have a bolt in it just to kind of help hold this it's in. It's like a fold-down seat, but in this case, it's bolted to that area there, and then up there, there's two bolts that go on each side. So that's how it looks like it adheres now there's the package tray i had to cut the hell out of to get to fit right but that's how it is with a roll bar so the main thing is it fits back there and once you i hook all this up and put the sheet metal screws in that go up in here and, and form it to fit so to speak and package tray, you're never even going to know 
and it looks like I can put the back seat in, so let's keep going. But I haven't seen a lot of documentation on putting a back seat in, so this is a fixed back seat. It doesn't fold down, but I think they use the same mechanism because this does have a fold down, and I'll show you. We'll bolt it in, we can fold it down. But I think there's a latch rather than it bolted right there. Let's get going. So here it's bolted in here and back here and I just have to adjust it a little bit and tighten it up after it's in place. But the seat folds back. I suspect this is the same component if you had a fold down seat. Probably has some carpet that goes in here or something. I don't know. But it's pretty cool to figure out. Now in my case, if you're gonna <coughs> do this, I had to fit this in here first because I didn't want to want to try to keep this stock looking. Although it looks butchered, like I said, you won't notice it when I have it all done. But if you're doing this originally, <coughs> you want to put the back seat, this, this part in first, then slide that panel in. Or you could do it like I did and not secure it by screws. But in order to get this to fit, I had to really work hard to get those screws in place. So now what I can do is just roll this up. My panel comes up. And you can see it secures into these areas right here. Now it may be off a little bit because I, like I said, had a hard time getting this screw in. But you ain't gonna notice it when I'm done, you watch. Overall fits pretty good. And then hopefully the back seat fits in here in regards to the roll bar. We'll test fit it now and see. After you get these panels in, then you can see that there's a sail panel that goes in here, which I got and I'm cleaning them up with a little rear pillar light. And then there's a big plastic piece that goes here in front of the, or the side of the seat. So now back to here, let's pull this back. It'll fall down. But there's a couple screws I showed you before. These brackets go right into here. So once I screw that into place, I'll show you. Right there, they'll go right in there and I'll put the screws in and attach it. Well, there it is, finishing it off. Lights work, the back seats fit. Well, I just gotta get the package tray fitted back here. Probably have to cut that in two sections because I'm not gonna try to bend it up through this roll bar. All right, guys, so the next step I'm gonna do is try to get a package tray to fit in that back area below the back window. Now this is the original one. This is what they look like. It's pretty good shape. Well, it's got some damage there, but the bottom line is they don't make them like they used to. I've never seen the reproduction ones, but I said, you know what? At this point, I just want to try to trial fit something with this roll bar. So I outlined it on a piece of cardboard, one of those tri-fold cardboard presentation things. I'd already cut it and I said, you know what? I'm going to make a video of this. So I use these power shears, great for cutting cardboard templates. Remove it, and there's what it looks like. So now let's form it. Now it's not the, not the same exact size. Actually, the original one's a little bit longer. But at this point, I'm just mocking it up, and who knows, man? You can't tell. Once you put stuff together, you'll never even notice it, I bet, if I painted this black. So let's see what we can do with it. So I got it in there, and I wanted to kind of form fit this because that's at an angle. So I kind of just started pushing on it. Kind of get it to fit in that area. It's not that hard to push in, especially when I'm using this hood for a work table. So we'll get this done later. But yeah, it looks pretty good. See if I can make it a little bit better. A 
Well, there it is. Kind of like the original, only different. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it to fit. A little better to see back here. So I slid it up over the top of the roll bar and went right in. Let's see. I mean, come on. How good is that? That's just how the original fits, just in there. So it might be off a little bit on the sides. We'll see how that is back there. But I cut that thing to fit for the roll bar. Might be getting cardboard back there. We'll see if you can tell. Nice template though, anyway. So that's how you make a template to make the regular filler panel when you don't have it. So check it out, there it is. That's the cardboard template I'm gonna to use to make a new package tray filler, the cover for the metal tray that you had to see me suffer and struggle to cut and fit. But once it's done, this will be looking factory. There's no doubt. So I gotta make it a little wider right there. And I need another one of those for the other side. I can't find it. So if you got one, let me know. We're getting there. Check it out. Looks good, I'm telling you. Fine tuning it up now. I love how the courtesy lights work. Back seat's going to be nice. I'll get the seat belt set up. Console's in. Got to fit the carpet. Kind of like the work that the lights work. It's coming along nice. What's up, guys? Elena Hall said here. Stay tuned to Drag Wash Garage.